By the end of this video you will learn how to transform absolutely every footage into the pattern shown in these examples and different quick ways to add more style just in a few clicks if you don't want to use AI. We need only two nodes to create sort of pixels. On the first node we make monochrome and add a mosaic blur. You can change pixel size with pixel frequency and adjust the aspect. Let's keep it default. On the next node you need to add a texture. I will use my DCTL Texturator 800 and here you must use the same pixel frequency and aspect as in the mosaic blur. About other parameters I will talk later. Then right click on the node with our texture and in composite mode choose hard mix. And here is our pattern. So let's talk about what is going on. Our texture comprises squares with shapes filled with three shades of grey and a black background. The brighter the shade, the earlier it will reveal in our pattern regarding source image brightness. For example, dark shadows in the source image will create a pure black pixel on our pattern. Lighter shadow will reveal the brightest shape filled with white. Mid-tone will reveal the brightest plus less bright shape. Highlights will reveal all three shapes and clipped highlights will fill the entire square with white. So we can adjust our pattern revealing using curves on the previous node and with gray sliders in the DCTL. And here's a little secret. Since sharpness increases contrast on the contrast edges, we can use sharpen to make our pattern even more interesting. Or you can use blur to make pixels rounder. Let me describe features of the DCTL. Pixel frequency and aspect are doing the same as in the mosaic blur. Grid sliders add strokes with the chosen gray value to our squares in texture. Gray sliders adjust the gray values of our shapes inside the main square. These sliders change the type of the texture. There are six types and zero is disabled in the pattern. If you want to combine shapes from different types, you can uncheck the checkbox single style and now you can change types with these sliders. Vertical line here shows which shape you change. In the left is the left shape, in the middle, middle, right, right. But also you can rotate shapes with these checkboxes. And you can even add the second layer of shapes with these sliders and checkboxes. Settings for the first layer are with number 1 in the square brackets. And for the second layer are with number 2. I am not sure if my calculations are correct, but there are probably over 2000 different combinations. And I didn't count the gray sliders and the grid and the size with the aspect. So you all can make unique patterns. And I want to mention, because of the math used to create the DCTL, it has a very organic look, thanks to somewhere different distance between our pixels and the pattern. For instance, these spaces are supposed to be the same, like here, but they are not, and I think it is great. Ok, let's add style to all this. We will color it with curves, but first we need to disable the loom mix. In the curves, let's subtract channels, something like that. Then we can add a glow to it. Threshold to 0, spread to the maximum, ratio to minus 1. You can play with parameters as you wish to find an interesting look, but I will keep it simple. Next we can add a harsh noise. I used my Remix DCTL with Pixel Mix mode. Right click, Composite mode, Overlay. And in this example it added texture to our glow and pixels. In the other example I used halation with default settings, except for secondary glow. I changed strength and gamma. I added pixel mix after the halation and then added a glow. I like this noisy, dirty texture. Also, you can add chromatic aberration using chromatic aberration removal. Just play with these sliders. If you want to add even more, enable the checkbox stronger correction. And you can add a prism blur. Feel free to change notes order with the command button on the Mac or control button on the Windows or add even more effects. You can discover very interesting results. Basically, that is how I made all this. The key here is the question, what if, like open the effects and uh, what if I add a watercolor, or scan lines, or kaleidoscope, or analog damage. That's all.